What's going on guys? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another double upload for you guys today. I was just finished doing a live stream with Ian, so if you guys haven't done that, check that one out. We speak about a lot of different Chelsea topics. We go back and forth about signings coming in and out, but with Chelsea, there's so much news coming out. It's like hard to even keep up. Like I put a video out yesterday about Thiago Silva and then more news about Saar came up. We did a live stream today and now even more news about Saar's come up. We've got news about Pedro and Thiago Silva as well. So we're going to go through all of that right now. Before I start this video, you already know what I'm going to say. If you haven't done so already, smash that like button, hit that subscribe button and press the bell notification button as well to be the first to know whenever any new content comes on this channel because... The way Chelsea are moving, I'm probably going to be doing double uploads for a while now. Every time I think our business is done for one day, they pull something out at the last hour and then it's like, how much stuff are we going to do? There's more stuff to even catch up, but I'm not going to complain too much. We've had a year without transfers, so it's kind of like we're doubling up on it this year. But I'm going to go straight into the news now. First piece of news, Chelsea have signed Malang Sar on a five-year deal. The 21-year-old signed on a free after leaving Nice at the end of the season due to no agreement on the terms. And he's likely to go straight out on loan. I will be honest about that. He is a very young... I'd say experienced, but he's still got a lot of way to go in his ability. He's still a very raw defender, so he's not going to come straight into the first team. He's very likely to go straight out on loan. There's a couple Bundesliga, a couple Liga and teams interested in him. But he's a very raw defender, but he has the fundamentals sorted. There are still areas of his game that he needs to improve, and we're going to talk about all of that in this video anyway. But it's another positive move from Chelsea, and it's another good long-term move from the club. Now, he's a left-footed centre-back, which is something that we've been looking for for a while. And he's versatile as well, which fits in with the Frank Lampard mould of trance. So you see, if Havertz can play anywhere in midfield and on the right, Ziyech can play centre in the right, Werner in the middle and on the left as well. Uh, and Saar can play left back, he can play left centre back in a back five, and he can also play centre back. So he's versatile throughout half of the defensive line anyway. And he's also played in a very similar style of play to Frank Lampard under Patrick Vieira at Nice. It's a very possession-paced style of football, one where there's a very high defensive line as well and he has to start the attacks from the back, which is also shown in his game because his best attributes right now are his ball-playing abilities. He's a great ball-playing centre-back. I will be real, his defensive stats aren't really the best right now and he has also kind of regressed this season compared to his performances in previous season but he's still a very promising defender with a long way to go in terms of potential so we aren't going to just write him off based on his stats right now but we are still going to talk about it just so you get a better understanding of the all-round player because I didn't really know much about Saad before this video anyway and I had to do my research for this as well so First thing we're going to talk about is aerial threat. Aerial threat is one of his biggest weaknesses in the, in the team. And that's also why we shouldn't be putting him straight into the first team anyway. Because one of our biggest problems, like I've always said, is aerial threat. If we bring in Saar right now, aerial threat isn't going to be there. He's very poor in terms of aerial threat. And I think his aerial duels win percentage is the fourth worst in the top five leagues this season at 33%. Again, been a lot better in previous seasons with 57 and 58%. But his aerial ability has definitely regressed and that's something that we want to see him work on at a future club. His tackle win rate isn't that attractive either at 48%, but the defensive duels ones looks a lot better at 65%. His defensive attributes aren't going to make anyone excited, but like I did say, his best attributes right now is his ball playing ability and his athleticism. He's got all the fundamentals in him to be, in a, great, to be a great defender. You just need to fine tune the best parts out of him, like the defensive side, because that's an area that he needs to improve on. But again, he's 21 years old. He's a raw defender. We ain't going to beat up on him too much. Um, let's talk about his passing stats because his passing stats look a lot better. As he averages 11 progressive passes per 90 with an average of 7 passes into the final third with 78% accuracy. And that just shows how good he is at starting, up, starting attacks from defence. How good he is playing as a deep line playmaker as well. Not anyone saying that I'm going to play him in the Jorginho role or anything. But playing in a high line with your defenders, they need to be good at starting their attacks as well. And the passing range from Saar is brilliant and especially for someone his age as well and that's one of the reasons why Frank Lampard is going to be so excited in him. 
Um, he's athletically very strong, which I've already said. He's fast, he's quick, which is needed in the high line to cover other defenders who are pushing forward as well. As well as when teams are trying to counter-attack us or when they're counter-attacking Nice, because recovery tackles are going to be a very big part of playing a high line. And like I've said before, he is versatile. So this transfer is one for the future. It's a very good transfer. I'm interested to see what club he goes to. Like I'll, I'll say the same thing I said with Tomori. Most likely, I'd like to see him go to a Premier League club if he has to go on loan. But in the case of Star, I'd rather see him go on, lo on loan in general because we're not signing him on a free just for him to sit on the bench for a year and just waste his potential. There's a very good defender in there. He just needs regular game time to try and fine-tune the little mistakes in his game because well, confidence is still a little bit of a factor. And I think with the way Nice have been over the last two years, they've been a very shaky side a lot of pressure has been put on Saar to perform regularly and for a player that young that's too much pressure for him right now and that's probably been impacting his performances as well so bring him into Chelsea send him out on loan to another club and we'll see how he is in the season but long term this is a very good transfer so I'm happy for this uh, second bit of news, Pedro has now finally signed for Roma. It's a three-year deal up to 2023. We knew this one was going to be on the cards for a long time and the only worrying part was the FA Cup final when he got injured and we were kind of worried that that transfer was going to block his way. F I mean, that injury was going to block the transfer through. Also kind of the reason why William wasn't playing for us for the Bayern Munich game as well. But the transfer's now gone through. Pedro is officially a, Rome pl a Roma player. He's gone out now. Again, Pedro, thank you for the memories. He's had an amazing time at Chelsea. He's a serial winner wherever he goes. He's probably still going to pick up trophies at Roma as well. And as a Chelsea fan, we ain't going to forget his performances. He's had some amazing goals for us. Remember the goal against Arsenal in the Europa League final? All those brilliant performances with Eden Hazard and Diego Costa in the 16-17 season. Amazing goals against Watford as well. He's come up with, his, he's come up with some great moments and he has declined very seriously significantly at his time at Chelsea but the work rate that this guy's shown no one is going to ever discredit him anyway so Pedro like I always say thanks for the memories and let's hope you just keep winning trophies at Roma as well Last bit of news for you guys today and it's about Thiago Silva. We already know Thiago Silva to Chelsea is basically going to happen but we now got it confirmed that the medical should be happening on Thursday. Talks between Thiago Silva and Chelsea have been happening over the last three or so weeks. It's been quiet talks but we've only really found out through the media over the last week which is why it's looked like it's happened so quickly since the Champions League final. We already know what the wages are going to be. Any little disagreements or little all things that they need to sort out have now been sorted out in the contract terms. He's going to be earning around 100k to 105k a week, which is a massive drop from the 325k a week wages he was earning at PSG. And the surprising thing is, Thiago Silva initially said he wanted to stay at PSG if they would offer it to him. But now, because her sources have come out saying Thiago Silva had, I mean, Thomas Tuchel has been trying to keep Thiago Silva. It's been a bit of a surprise to me that he's still trying to push forward with this move to Chelsea, but sources are also saying um, PSG director Leonardo does not have the same plans as Thomas Tuchel, and also Leonardo's relationship with Thiago Silva has deteriorated throughout the season, which is also part of the reason why Thiago Silva is pushing for a new challenge. Obviously, it doesn't make much difference in the grand scheme of things. Thiago Silva is still going to be a Chelsea player, and it looks like it's going to be announced by the end of the week. But it's just a bit more information to give you guys. I'm, I thought he was going to be saying that PSG if an offer came for him. And Thomas Tuchel does want to keep him. But it's another issue up above then, I'm guessing. Because he's had problems with the board. And I'm guessing that might have to do with some of his wages. Because he probably would have kept similar wages. Or a little bit less of a pay cut. But probably not too much. Because we know PSG and they're literally bleeding money. So it wouldn't have been anything too different. He is going to be coming to Chelsea though. We already know what he will bring to the team. He brings experience. Everything I've basically said about Maleng Sarr is what Thiago Silva has, but completed. He is a great ball playing centre back, a great deep line playmaker. He, for his age, he's ridiculously fit as well. And he brings experience and organisation to a defence that seriously needs it. So I'm buzzing to see Thiago Silva join. 
Ben Chilwell and Kai Havertz should also be confirmed in the week. I don't want to say too much about Kai Havertz because we really have been waiting ages for it, but that should be through the door as well. I'm going to be doing a live with Neil from Beyond the 90 LCFC where we're going to be talking about Ben Chilwell as well, so check that one out. And if you haven't done so already, check out my Why Ben Chilwell Will Leave Leicester video that I did with him a couple weeks ago where we were talking about little hints to why Ben Chilwell might be leaving that people had ignored over the last few months and why this deal did look inevitable, so check that one out and yeah don't forget to like and subscribe to carefree lewis g this is the end of the video for you guys today take care like and subscribe up the gels